So today, I'm coming to you from the Ashanti Regional Capital, Kumasi. And just a bit of background, for the past three weeks, I have been in the Ashanti region for work, and I've taken the time to explore the region. Um, probably not fully because I've had to work alongside, but I've done a bit of exploration and tourism, and I'm here to share my findings with you. So if you ever find yourself in the Ashanti Regional Capital, Kumasi, these are some of the things that I think you should do to they're worthwhile, they're not so expensive, and I'll go in the order of my favorite activities. So the first activity I'd want to introduce to you is a visit to the Kumasi Zoo. And the Kumasi Zoo is located in town in the in Kumasi, in a very busy part of Kumasi. It's surrounded by the cultural center and the Kijitia market and a few other things. So it's right in the middle of town and the zoo boasts of over a hundred species of animals. I had a blast when I went. I got to interact with uh, Mona monkeys. I saw a lion, a lioness and their cubs. I saw um, different species of monkeys, different species of baboons, eagles, so many things, crocodiles. There are so many species that you get to learn about and it's just a good time. It takes about an hour, an hour and a half to go through an entire tour of the of the zoo. But I had a good time. The camels are all over the place. There are donkeys that are free free roaming. There was a baby chimp that was just walking around. And then the camels are also free roaming at a certain point in during the day. So I had a very good time when I visited the Kumasi Zoo. I would say that is the first activity, probably because it's really cheap. It's within the town. It doesn't take too much of your time. So that's why I would say it's the first activity. Visit the Kumasi Zoo, you won't regret it. The second activity for me would be to visit Bantama. And before I came to Kumasi, I had, I had never really heard of Bantama. I've heard of Bantama during the elections, but I didn't know anything about Bantama. So let me give you a bit of a backstory. I said I've been here for three weeks, right? I have been going to work and then at the hotel. Like I literally go to work and then I'm back and then I'm at the hotel. So I got pretty bored and so I called up a friend and I told him I wanted to step out. So he took me to Bantama and this was around 9 p.m. and the place was so busy. 9 p.m. is not really late for a lot of places but most of the neighborhoods in, in Kumasi were asleep. Bantama, we literally get in there and it's like daytime. People walking up and down streets, food sellers on the street, coconut, fruits, and rice, like whatever you can think of, the shops are open. And so I, I asked my friend, like, why is it so busy? And he tells me that, oh, it's very typical of Bantama. Bantama, like, literally never sleeps. And I could see that, like I got that feeling. People were really just going about their day and you know, things were just moving on like as they would on a regular business day. And from what I'm told, this the place never sleeps. That is to say that if you go to Bantama at 1.30 in the morning, you will still see a lot of people there. If you go to Bantama at 2 a.m., you can see a lot of people there. And apparently you can stay at Bantama till daybreak. But that's the thing, I really enjoyed going to Bantama. I loved seeing the environment. I loved seeing the people, the pharmacy, the grocery shops, everything was open. It's like everybody has the memo that you're supposed to stay open till very late. I understand Fridays at Bantama are pretty lit. Like there's so much activities, pubs are open very late. You get to drink and hang out and you know, partake in other activities as well. It's also like the red light district. So that's what I'm told. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, but I think Bantama for me is the second on the list just because it's a completely different vibe from what I'm used to in Kumasi and I mean you can go there without any money you can go there with a lot of money like I went and I bought street food like Kelewele fruit but you can just go there and pass the time just walk through the streets see what's up I think it's a it's a pretty good environment that's that's what I think just be safe let me tell you the story a lady sold yeah so this coconut vendor was a lady I have never seen a female coconut vendor before but she was a lady, so I went to buy a coconut from her. I made a mistake and I didn't ask for the price. Guess what? She told me the coconut was four CD. At this point, I didn't have a choice but to pay for it. But coconut is not four CD. It's two CD, two CD, 50 pesos. Definitely not four CD. 
but I'm a Ghanaian, I got ripped off, so just be careful when you're out there, but you can go hang out and have a good time. My third pick for a good time in the Ashanti region is to go to the cultural center. You get to see a lot of people, a lot of artwork, a lot of artifacts. There's a good restaurant there, Ike's. You can check them out as well. But the cultural center is, if you've been to the Accra cultural center, it's pretty much the same thing. You shop, you buy things, artifacts, um, waste beads, whatever it is you're interested in, earrings, things of that nature, African print cloth, African print um, you know, designs and clothing. So you should try the cultural center in Kumasi. Of course, like I said earlier, you can choose to go and not spend any money. You can just window shop. All those options are available to you. You can window shop, you can actually spend money, buy gifts for friends. I think it's a pretty good place to visit when you are in the Ashanti regional capital, Kumasi. And it's right next door to the zoo. So you can actually visit the zoo and then move to the cultural center. And it's opposite KJTR market as well. So if you're interested in visiting KJTR market, you can do that as well. The fourth thing on my list is Lake Possum Tree. And this is the fourth thing on my list because it requires a bit of planning to make it to the lake. It's not within Kumase, but it is in the Ashanti region. It takes about an hour and a half to get to the lake from Kumase. So when I was going, I left very early. I left at like 5.30 in the morning and we got there by 7 a.m. So the Lake Possum Tree is a very sacred lake. To the Ashanti people and according to science it was formed by an, a hyper velocity small object hit the earth and caused a depression and you can find craters even on the moon like different bodies in space have craters but in this case a high velocity small object hit the earth and formed what is now Lake Bosom Tree. It is very sacred to the Ashanti people for different reasons and there's also a story that a hunter was trying to was chasing a deer i think and um the the pond a pond swallowed the deer the pond in the pond in this case is lake bosom tree but basically the hunter felt as though the pond was trying to protect the deer so it's really a very sacred lake to the ashanti people but it's a very beautiful place to be it's circular in nature and the drive there is a bit long, but I think it's worth it. It's very recreational, so you can hang out, you can go with friends, have a picnic or something of that sort. But I think it's worth it. That's why I would say it's the fourth thing to do when you are in the Ashanti region. The fifth thing is a visit to the Mensha Palace. The Mensha Palace is the seat of the Asante Hene. When I say Asante Hene, I mean the, the Ashanti king. And so that is the, the seat of the Ashanti kingdom. The old palace now serves as a museum. And so the current palace is really where the Ashanti Hene resides. So I put this as number five simply because during my visit, they were undergoing renovations. So I couldn't really get a feel of the palace and I hope to come back and actually get a full tour of the palace. But during my visit, they were undergoing renovations and that's why I put it at number five because I've heard really good things about it. The thing about the Mensha Palace, however, is that you're not allowed to video, photograph, things of that nature. So during your tour, you won't be able to take any videos or pictures but it's it's worth it just because if you know if you know some bit of history Ghanaian history you know that the Ashanti kingdom is very powerful even within the African continent the Ashanti kingdom is very powerful so just to be able to see the seat of the Ashanti kingdom I think is very well worth it but it's only number five on my list because I didn't get the full the feet like the feel of it because the time I was here they were undergoing a renovation but I think it's definitely something you should do if you find yourself in the Ashanti region the last thing on my list is a visit to the KJTR market. The KJTR market is supposedly one of the largest open air markets in Africa or in West Africa. And it was recently renovated after the market went through a series of fires. So it was recently renovated and it's actually quite beautiful. I think the architecture is really remarkable. Um, I have it as the last thing to do on my list just because I'm a Ghanaian. I visit markets all the time and it's not new to me, but I can understand the feeling for people who have never been to a market like this, who are probably used to grocery shops and things of that nature. 
the KJTR market may be a bit of a different environment that is worth exploring. The truth is you can find anything at the KJTR market from gold to necklaces to kente, African prints like spices, whatever you want, leaves, herbs, you can find it at the KJTR market. That's the beauty of the place. It's a place of commerce. It's a place where people meet and interact. So that's it for me. Those are six things on my list of things to do when you are in the Ashanti region. I think they're very much worth it. I know when people think of Ghana, you think of maybe Accra and the Northern region because those are the sites that a lot of people talk about. But spending three weeks in the Ashanti region, I honestly feel like the Ashanti region has a lot to offer as well. If you take the time to explore, the people are very, very nice. Um, in fact, it's deepened my understanding of the language. <laughs> Don't quote me on that anyway. But yes, I thought that... Uh, so these are the, the six things. So just to round it up, my first thing would be to visit the Kumasi Zoo, just because it has a good price point. It's very accessible and it gives you a different experience, at least a learning experience for me. The second thing would be to visit Bantama, because even for me as a Ghanaian, it was a new experience. It was a different environment to watch people interact at that time of the night, almost as if it was daytime. I thought it was pretty different. The third thing to do is to visit the cultural center, just because I think you can get a lot of big gifts and you can shop, window shop, whatever it is. And um, the fourth thing is to visit Lake Bosomtre because it has a very sacred history to the Ashanti people. The fifth thing is to visit the Mensha Palace. And again, I put this as the fifth thing because I didn't get to experience it myself but i do think it should be higher up and the last thing is kjtr markets it's last for me because i am a Ghanaian and i'm used to markets but i can understand how it may be interesting for people to see commerce within an open air market so that's it that's my six top six things to do when you are in the ashanti region my name is jijo klake you can find me on social media as adventures of a Ghanaian girl please follow like subscribe and share with your friends. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. If you have anything interesting that you think I didn't mention or that I should do, please hit me up. I'll definitely get back to you. Thank you for the time. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's pretty late. It's almost 10 p.m. past my bedtime. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoy making them for you, but my three weeks so far in Ashanti region has been pretty exciting. I have had a lot of fun. I wish I had started doing more things when I first got here, but I think I was very skeptical and maybe a bit afraid. But third week in, it's been a, it's, it's been a lot of fun so far. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please share. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear from you. And please hit the subscribe button. The subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> please hit the subscribe button the red subscribe button just tap it yes it really goes a long way to help me out um and thanks for watching i hope you enjoy my next video see you in the next video